This painting by Henri Rousseau is called The Sleeping Gypsy. It was painted in 1897. It depicts a lion coming across a sleeping woman in the desert. It's really one of my favorites of Rousseau's paintings. It seems like he's watching over her in a way, maybe protecting her rather than thinking about lunch or dinner. <laughs> Henri Rousseau was a self-taught artist who was based in Paris. His subjects included jungle scenes and we know that Rousseau never left France. It's not that he traveled to Morocco or other parts of Africa and witnessed these kinds of subjects, but that he imagined them with the help of some of the things he saw in Paris. And the one source that we know of for the sleeping gypsy, for the lion, is a bronze sculpture that's in the botanic gardens that he would have seen. Rousseau wrote to his hometown of Laval offering them the painting for 1,800 francs. Whatever happened, uh, the painting did not end up going to Laval, but uh, it basically it disappeared from view until 1924. The painting was supposedly found in a charcoal merchant shop in Paris. You wonder, you know, how it was displayed and if, yeah, at some point, we know it was quite dirty. The dealer who was associated with, with it uh, wrote to us and said that he had had it cleaned and varnished. So it's had several uh, conservation treatments. Some of the treatments we know exactly what happened, some we don't know exactly. Part of the detective work really was just going to our archives in the painting and sculpture department and, and seeing what kind of written documentation there was, and it turned out there was quite a bit. Letters from Rousseau, and then we also had some photographs, early photographs from the 20s and the 40s. After consulting the documentation, then of course we have the painting here in the studio. We look at it under different lighting conditions, and that includes infrared light, ultraviolet light, even x-ray. The painting had never been x-rayed, so we were keen to do that. It's been on continuous view, so it's really the first time we've been able to spend time with it and get to really know the painting. All those different techniques give us clues to the condition of the painting. That's very helpful for starting any kind of treatment. The sky looked particularly blotchy because the old restorations no longer matched, and we knew also that it had at least three layers of varnish on it that had been applied over the years and some of those had discolored quite markedly. What you're seeing here is the fully stitched together x-ray. This can tell us, you know, this tear is actually pretty significant over an inch or two of the mouth. Or down here, a very old repair might be hard to see um, because they might have used a paint like that is very similar to the original paint. So oil paint over oil paint. Um, but we can see that there is something going on here that doesn't look right. All of this darkening, you know, something happened to the original paint and then new paint was added to fill that loss. Compositional changes are always interesting, so finding a vessel where there is no longer a vessel is always kind of surprising and exciting. Now that we know it's there, if you look at a certain angle in the painting, you can actually see the outline of it because he didn't erase it. He left the paint. He just covered it with more paint. I hope that he wouldn't be too embarrassed with us knowing his changes or maybe what he considered mistakes. Um, definitely doing it for the sake of research. I mean, the sky has been challenging because, uh, first of all, it was very heavily varnished not by Rousseau, but by restorers in the 40s and 50s. So now, 65 years later, 
these materials have really discolored and degraded and they're altering the original colors of the painting, so I'm removing them to reveal the, the real Rousseau palette. So I'm doing that with this tissue and solvents that causes the varnish to be dissolved and safely absorbed into the tissue and peel it off the surface. It's quite gentle because it doesn't involve um, rubbing the surface more than necessary. And, and then the varnish layer comes off onto the tissue. So removing that really revealed the true colors of the background, but it also revealed some areas that have been heavily overpainted. Once I've finished the varnish removal, I'll go back and remove those old restorations using a gel material, which is uh, applied to the surface and, and left on there. It swells the overpaint, and then that's removed with a brush. There's so much to do and not so much time that, that we're taking the opportunity to work side by side. So right now, Dion is working on the dress of the gypsy, which has some cracks. So I'm just using a teeny tiny brush to feed color into areas that are cracked. You know, you don't want to miss, so you have to be pretty precise because you're matching the color to look good in the crack, not on top of the paint. There was some small damages in the body of the lion and in the face of the figure, so those needed to be restored. Typically, you use a kind of material that's reversible because if you chose the same materials that the artist used, they would essentially fuse with the surface and you wouldn't be able to remove them after they've dried. So that's why we, we don't use oil on an oil painting. We might choose a synthetic paint instead because the solvents you need to remove it will not harm the original oil paint. We found areas of the sky that were um, totally white that revealed the priming layer. So getting to match the you know, oil paint from 1897 can be challenging. And particularly blue is, blue is difficult to match because it looks different in different lighting conditions. Typically in, in the studio, since we have nice diffuse northern light, it's even enough so we get a good color match. But it's also possible in the galleries it could look slightly green or slightly pale. But we'll, we'll bring it to the galleries and and look at it, hopefully, before it's, you know, actually installed. the way he thought about how the moon reflects on the figures and highlights certain things. That, to me, is like really magical about this painting. As we have a different approach these days than, than we had in the 50s, everything's a little more minimal, so the painting won't need to have a whole varnish removal ever again. I mean, it was really the first time I'd worked extensively on a Russo painting, so it was really exciting to see, especially the colors in the sky revealed and the stars start to twinkle as the varnish came off. It's a magical environment you could picture yourself in, I guess, as long as you're not afraid of large uh, animals <laughs> coming up in the night. 